Praise the Lord and God bless you. My name is Dr. Jonathan Lotson, and this is a look at leadership. And I am so excited to share with you on today. Today, we are going to be dealing with the topic, Inspire. Today, we're going to deal with the topic, Inspire. It is so, so very important that every single leader, no matter where you are serving, if you're serving in the church, if you're serving in the marketplace, if you're serving in politics or government, if you will, no matter where you find yourself in leadership, it is the job of the leader to be able to inspire. There are so many gifts out here. There are so many things that people are trying to learn and trying to, to, to develop. However, one of the most important, yet one of the most overlooked things that are out there that is imperative for great leadership is the ability to inspire. And for those who are watching and perhaps you're saying, well, I don't know how to inspire. Well, I am so happy that you are tuning in and that you are watching because when you desire the gift to inspire, you are heading in the right direction. The truth of the matter is when it comes down to being able to inspire, it is something that develops. It is something that grows. And so for those who may uh, have concerns or a little apprehensive, if you will, about their ability to inspire, I want you to know that number one, that you can do it. Before I move on and really get into the, the four things that I want to share with you on today, I want every single individual who will ever lay eyes on this video, I want you to know without a shadow of a doubt that you can inspire. That is one of the foundational things that we all must understand. We also must understand that it is a process. I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but I do want to put this as a foundation that it is a process. And so as I previously stated, when it comes down to being able to inspire, it is an, it is an important gift. It is a great gift that needs to be developed. Um, however, it is something that often we find people overlooking. But I want you to know that being able to inspire, it is going to help you and your organization get further and to get further faster, okay? So one of the things that I really wanna share with you um, as we consider the, uh, the topic of inspiring or to inspire, when it comes down to learning how to inspire or the importance of inspiring, um, I want everyone to consider how important it is or if someone may be looking and may be concerned or maybe asking the question, why? Being able to inspire, it is so important because being able to inspire is directly connected to influence. John Maxwell, a very well-known leader uh, and a great teacher of leaders, he often says that leadership is influence. And if we were to just change the world or just uh, massage it or, or change it just a tad bit, we can definitely agree that influence and being able to inspire go hand in hand. And so it is a leader's ability to inspire, which enables them to influence others to a certain place and, and gets them into a, a position, a mind frame, if you will, to, to move them from where they are to where they need to be. Everybody, no matter who you are, no matter how old you are, no matter where you live, no matter your background, all should know this, that where I am today, that it is not where I should be in the future. And what I mean by that is this, I do not want to be the same Jonathan that I am in 2020 uh, and that I will be in 2025. I want there to be a difference in me. When people see me in 2025, I want them to say, oh man, uh, Dr. Jonathan Lawson in 2020 was okay. But in 2025, you are a whole new person. 
And that is the thing that everyone should be chasing after, that we ought to be getting better and better and better as the day goes on. And so I want everyone to realize that who you are today, it is just a snapshot of who you will become. And we use what we have, we have knowledge of and we use who we are today as a guide to direct us to where we need to go, all right? And so that is the case in our personal life, that is the case in our organization, our business, our ministry, and so on and so forth. So with that in mind, it is the job of the leader to inspire, to help influence ourselves first and foremost, and then those we provide leadership to, it's our job to inspire them, to move them from where they are to where they should be. My uh, presiding bishop often says, I see you in the future and you look much better than you do right now. And it's the job of every single leader to be able to inspire. And so we're still in the foundation of this. And so before I go into the four things that I want to share with you, I want you to know that every leader, when it comes down to inspiring others, they must be able to see beyond what that individual looks like right now, knows right now, has right now, okay? And as I'm stating this in the context of a leader to those they provide leadership to, Please don't get me wrong, because I, I really want this to be uh, in the back of your mind that when I'm talking about them, I am making the, the assumption, if you will, that it must be first done within the leader, him or herself. OK, so as I'm talking about, it's the job of the leader to inspire others to move people from where they are now to where they should be in the future. And as I'm talking about a leader's job to move um, those they provide leadership to, to, to look beyond where they are right now and consider their future. I'm also suggesting that this is something that the leader must do him or herself prior to doing what I'm suggesting, okay? So let that be in, in, in the context or in the framework of this that I am also stating that this, the leader, they are not exempt from this, okay? You as the leader, you are not exempt from this, but you must be the first partaker of these things in order to really be effective and to be able to help those you provide leadership to, okay? So when it comes down to being a great leader and a leader really tapping in and developing their ability to inspire, it's the job of the leader to look beyond what they see right now. And so when we consider all of the things that we've suggested thus far, I really hope and pray that, that you really understand the importance of a leader's ability to inspire okay so the first thing that i want to share with you out of the four things that i will share on um on this day is that it is imperative for leaders to know that inspiring is a choice that's the first thing i want every single leader to know that the 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 desire to inspire it has to be number one because believe it or not it is so easy to be negative. I, I don't know who, who is who is watching at this moment. I, I really don't. However, I believe that there are some honest people who will watch and will confess that yes, there is, there are times in which I am negative. We have to be honest. We have to be open. And when I say that, because we know that it's easy to be negative, we have to make a conscious choice. We have to make up in our mind that we will choose to inspire even when we have the thought of negativity, even when it comes to our mind to say something that's negative or whatever the case may be, it is the job of the leader to choose wisely. And when it comes down to choosing, if they're going to be negative, or if they're going to inspire, it will make a huge difference, okay? And so it's the job of the leader to first make the choice that they will inspire. As I previously stated, it is so easy to fall into negativity. 
it is so easy to watch this. You may not say something negative or you may not necessarily think something negative, but it's so easy to participate in negativity, even in the midst of one silence. However, it is not it is not possible to be inspirational and negative at the same time. So it's the job of the leader to make sure that he or, or, or her, that whoever is providing leadership, it is the job of that leader to make sure that they will choose to inspire. Watch this. Even in the face of negativity, it is the job of the leader to be able to be amongst the negativity and instantly change the narrative and begin to inspire. What are you talking about, Dr. Lotta? I'm so happy you asked. You could you can find yourself around others and they may say, you know, I, I just can't believe that they're doing such and such. I can't believe that they allow such and such to do this or that or the other. Are you going to be the leader that says nothing, which is not helpful? Or are you are you going to be the leader who 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 entertains or goes along with it and say, yeah, I can't believe they did that either? which is not helpful, or are you going to be the leader who's going to make the choice to inspire and say something like, you know, why don't we all come on one accord and agree that we may not necessarily agree with everything, but we are going to do all that we can do to help our organization, to help our business, our ministry get to the next level. Do you all have any suggestions? You know, we have to make sure that we are inspiring and don't just stop there, but say, I know that you can do it. I know that you have the potential. I know if we come together that we can, can work something out so that the organization can really thrive and really be all that it's called to be. And so it's the job of the leader to make sure that they inspire. Watch this. And that they make choice. That is their choice. That is their first choice to inspire, okay? So the next thing I really want to under, I want you all to understand is when it comes down to the ability to inspire, it is the job of the leader to always keep the big picture in mind. This is so important because when it comes down to leadership, it is so it is so easy to, to get caught up in the weeds or to get caught up with what someone is not doing and, and say, well, forget it, then I'm, I'm just going to leave it alone. It is so it is so easy to do so. And I am a living witness that it is something that can sometimes catch us off guard. However, it is the job of the leader to occasionally step back and to look at the big picture and then not necessarily get, get, get caught off guard to the point in which they allow themselves not to inspire. Because as I stated in the first point, inspi inspiring others, it is a choice. Okay, so when it comes down to being inspirational, it is a choice. So when we think about the uh, the big picture or making sure that we keep the big picture in mind, we have to realize that it is a choice that a leader decides to make. And so when it comes down to considering the big picture all the time, we must realize that no, everything may not go right all the time, but that's an opportunity for us to inspire no, you, you may have to repeat yourself a thousand times. You may get irritated, but that's another opportunity for us to inspire. There may be some times when, when you are looking at, uh, at the organization and you are wanting it to go to another level faster and, and you really want it to be more efficient and you get frustrated. However, it is the job of the leader to look at the big, picture and not get distracted by any setbacks, not get distracted by anything or anyone on the team, but always realize the big picture to say that these are, are, are just challenging moments that is that are very important because they are they're going to play a part in our learning to get to the uh, the desired end. I was once taking a class in communication. And it was a class and it was dealing with group dynamics and abil the ability of a group to communicate. And one of the things that, that transpires during that process 
it is um, confrontation or it is an, it is moments in which uh, a group getting to the next level that it requires some type of tension. And so it is so important that we consider this because the, the whole idea of a group thriving, it is a group being able to get past difficult moments. So it is the big picture of the group to function in a healthy manner. However, there may be some hiccups here and there, but it is very important to the group because it builds something in the individuals of the group. Watch this. It weeds out those who should not be a part of the group and it helps the organization or the group, if you will, get to the next level. So if we put this in the context of a leader's ability to inspire and making sure that they keep the big picture in mind, we have to understand that to build the character of those who you are providing leadership to in order to build uh, the stick to of those who you are providing leadership to, it is imperative that you understand that as you're planning and as you're preparing to go to your next level, that there will be bumps in the road, but we're not gonna focus on that. We're gonna realize that these bumps in the roads are opportunity for us as leaders to inspire those we provide leadership to and help them to continue to thrive despite what they may be going through, despite the frustration. And we have to help them to see the big picture, that there is a big picture in mind. And so these setbacks, we're not gonna dwell on them. The, the tension in the group, we're not gonna do, we're not gonna dwell on that, but we're going to use these, the, these things as a tool to learn, which is not going to slow us down from um, getting to our goals, but what it's going to do is gonna prepare us to be ready for the goal. When we think about being able to see the big picture, we have to understand that nine times out of 10, when it comes down to achieving these goals, that there must first be a preparation. Even if the preparation is in, is in, in mentality, or mindset, if you will. We have to realize that in order to really do great things and take advantage of these great opportunities that's in the future, the big picture, we have to let our minds and our hearts know that the things that we may uh, see now we're not going to get distracted by that, but we're going to realize that those are learning opportunities because when it comes down to obtaining great things, we first must be prepared in our mind. So we're going to use these things to learn from it so that when we get to our big opportunity, that we are not only prepared with the amount of people, not only prepared with the amount of money, but we are also prepared mentally. And so it's the job of the leader to keep the big picture in mind and constantly inspire no matter what they may sense or no matter what may be going on in the organization, the culture, the ministry, or what have you. But they must keep the big picture in mind and know that these are just stepping stones and that these are things that are going on, but we're going to learn from them so that when we get to our promised land that we are ready for it. OK, I know that was a lot, but I know that you can handle it. So let's get to the third thing that I want to share with you. The third thing that I want to share is when it comes down to a leader's ability to inspire, a leader must know that it is a process. Being able to inspire, it is a process. I kind of touched on it on the last point. However, uh, it is imperative that when it comes down to inspiring, that you are inspiring people to a goal, to a end product, okay? And so as you consider the goals that you may have, you have to know that these goals, especially goals that are, are worth something, that they do not just uh, happen overnight. But the goals that we're trying to achieve, that it has a process that there are some things that have to transpire in order to get us from point A to point B. So as there is a process between different goals or achieving your goals, we must also know that there will be a process when it comes down to inspiring people to achieve various goals. And we must know that this process, that it is something that I guess we can say it's almost like building blocks. 
because when you are trying to inspire others to reach a goal, it's imperative that you consider the small goals, inspire them for the day and keep on going. I love when we find in scripture, we hear, uh, uh, Lord, give us this day, our daily bread. And I want to just use that for just one second. Lord, give us this day, our daily bread. So it's saying that we need this, we need this daily bread every single day. It is almost the same when it comes down to inspiring and trying to uh, achieve goals. When you're trying to achieve goals, you need a different type of inspiration each day. Sometimes you need to inspire to keep on going. Sometimes you need to be inspired to, to, to do it um, even better or, or even dream bigger. Sometimes when you're inspiring for that day, you, you, may, you need something to tell you, don't give up. We, sometimes you, when you're in the process of achieving a goal, you need to be inspired um, to network more or you need to be inspired um, to, to sleep less or to sleep more or to, whatever the case may be. There are different ways in which we all need to be inspired. And so if you are a leader of an organization, if you're a leader of a family or ministry, not only is different inspiration need for each day, we must also understand that different individuals need different forms of inspiration. And so because that is true, we have to keep in mind that it is a process and it is the job of the leader to help people through their process. And what's going to help us? It is our ability to inspire them through the process of achieving the goals. I want to take a sidebar here to say that it is not only the job is not only the leader's job to make sure that people are inspired to achieve the organizational or the ministerial um, goal. No, it is not the job of the leader to just push, push, push that that to make them um, do what the organ what's going to benefit the organization. But great leaders, they not only inspire them for that, but great leaders help. Um, those who they are providing leadership and they help them by inspiring them to be all that they can be in the organization and out of the organization, in the business and out of the business. Watch this, in the church and outside of the church. It is the job of the leader to help and to inspire those they provide leadership to in their organization and beyond. Because a great and a great individual um, who is a part of an organization, they have needs too. They have desires too. They have a personal life that they that they are dealing with and wrestling with on a daily basis. And they will appreciate the leader so much more if they know that their leader is not only concerned about them doing what they ask them to do for the benefit of the organization or the church or the business or what have you, but that they are so concerned about them that they're inspiring them to be all that they can be even outside of the organization. And so when we consider all of these things, it is the job of the leader to realize that inspiration, sure enough, is a process. And it is a process that a leader should be committed to because it will pay off. I, I, I like to say that relationships are so key to being a great leader and to getting to the next level. And so when it comes down to thinking about relationships, when those who you provide leadership, when they realize that you are committed to inspiring them through their process and that you will be committed to the process of inspiring them in various ways of in their lives, your relationship will be so strong and you will be surprised of what will happen in your life as a result of being committed to the process of inspiring them in their lives. And so I want you to keep that in mind. As we get into this fourth point, I really want you to make sure that you hold on to this for dear life. As I state this next point, I want you to put it, put it on your on your mirror, put it on some post-it notes, put it on your board at home. I want you to put it on your phone. If you old school, put it, write it down on the palm of your hand. Do whatever you need to do because it is just that important. And is this inspire, no 
matter what. That's the fourth thing I want to tell you when it comes down to inspiring and a leader's job to inspire. I want you to make sure that you inspire no matter what. And I said that I want you to put it everywhere and I want you to really ingrain it in your heart and ingrain it in your mind. Why? Because the truth of the matter is sometimes when a leader is inspiring, they sometimes can be ignored or may seem as if they're being ignored, but that's not a pass to stop inspiring. Sometimes when it comes to inspiring others, it, it may not seem appreciated. I mean, but I believe uh, most people can, can say that sometimes growing up, when your parents would say to do this or that or the third, you know, we, would, we wouldn't appreciate it. It would seem like we didn't appreciate it. But as we grew up, we, and we really appreciated them for trying to help us. And we really know that it was beneficial or that it was helpful. So when we consider that, we have to know that even though um, our, our inspiration today, it may seem as if it's being ignored. It may seem as if it's just being tolerated, not appreciated. It may seem like that may be the reality, but as they grow, as they mature, as they go through life, they will remember your inspiration today. And it's the job of the leader to ensure and to make sure that they are trying to help people for their tomorrow. If we are not getting uh, any attention or they're not taking it in our help for today, we have to realize that their tomorrow will be impacted and it will be, it will be so beneficial by what we impart in them today. And so we have to realize that. It's the job of the leader. And this is also, it can go into when we talk about keeping the big picture in mind, because the leader must understand that they must inspire no matter what, because even if it's not received now, the big picture, they will receive it later. It is the job for the leader to inspire no matter what, because as a leader inspires no matter what, they then position themselves to receive no matter what. Dr. Lotta, what are you talking about? I'm so happy you asked. The Lord will not allow people to give in vain. The Lord really does appreciate the sacrifices, the inspiration, the love that you give. Watch this, even if it's not uh, reciprocated by that individual, even if it doesn't seem appreciated by that individual, the Lord will still bless you. And I'm here to tell you, friend, that the person you are providing inspiration to is not the only person on earth. They are not the only person who you will ever meet in your life. And because that is true, they are not the ones who we are waiting to bless us. We're inspiring them and pouring into them and doing all we can to, to help them because it's the right thing to do. However, God can use anybody to bless us back for what we pour out. And so it's the job of the leader to inspire no matter what. They can ignore you. They can, they can take it for granted. They can they not give you credit or whatever the case may be. But it's the job of the leader to inspire no matter what. And if we as leaders are going to help people, are going to propel people, then it is our job to inspire. Inspiration is one of the most beneficial gifts. However, as I mentioned, one of the things that is often overlooked. However, in this time, in this moment, in this season, I want every single individual to make up in their mind that they're going to constantly develop their ability to inspire. Because inspi inspiring others is key to helping organizational goals, personal goals, and the like to get accomplished. And it is something that every leader must be committed to doing. They must be committed to inspiring others. And I want every single person to be committed to it, even if you feel like you can't inspire. I want you to be committed to it because the only way that a cook um, to get better is to keep on cooking. The only way for a driver to be a better driver is to keep on driving. And I'm here to let you know that the only way 
that a leader is going to be better at inspiring, it is by keep on inspiring. And I want you to be committed to the process. I want you to know that it is worthwhile. And I want you to be committed to inspiring no matter what. Listen, I really hope and pray that you enjoyed our time together as we dealt with a leader's job, a leader's role to inspire. And I want you to join me in committing to be an inspiration to somebody this week. Well, Dr. Lawson, I, I, don't, I don't know if I can do it. Well, I said earlier, number one, that the first thing every leader must realize is that they can. And so it's important that we realize that we already have the potential, we have the ability, we have the giftings to inspire. Now it's our job to work the gift and inspire the human race, the humankind. Everyone all over the world, it's our job to inspire them because God will be pleased. Your organization will benefit, your family, your ministry will benefit if we all desire to be an inspiration to those we are in community with. Again, I hope and pray you enjoyed our time together. And until the very next time, I want you to continue to inspire others and may God continually bless you. God bless.